Hi, hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar, Achieving Database DevOps Success in Financial Services. Whether it's regulatory change, fast moving markets or increased competition from disruptors, financial institutions don't have the option of slowing down. High performing organizations are including the database in DevOps practices like continuous delivery and reaping the benefits of faster software releases, reduced downtime and crucially improved compliance. Today, we will discuss how you can lead your team to IT success by extending DevOps practices to the database and explore how your processes compare with others in your industry. As part of this, we will look at the drivers for adopting DevOps in financial institutions, the key challenges when implementing DevOps and why the database is often overlooked, the current state of database DevOps in the financial service industry, and crucially, how to benchmark and improve your database DevOps practices against your competitors. So first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tom Austin. I am head of pre-sales engineering here at Redgate Software. I've been with Redgate for coming up to 10 years now. All the time spent working with Redgate's uh, SQL Server database change management tools. Um, and I've worked with organizations from very small startups to uh, large global banks. Um, and more recently, I've been working on writing and delivering database DevOps training courses uh, across Europe and, and in Asia. And this is really, you know, database DevOps, this is really my area of focus right now. So I'm really delighted to be able to talk to you all about this as a, a topic. For those of you who aren't familiar with Redgate, um, Redgate's 17 years old. We uh, we have over 200,000 customers using Redgate products. Um, and actually, if you look at the Fortune 100, 91% of those organizations are using Redgate tools. We, we're huge in the community, so we sponsor a, a ton of user groups. Um, we are also responsible for websites such as SQL Server Central and Simple Talk, which attract uh, 2 million users. Uh, so you may well have interacted with Redgate without actually knowing that you were interacting with Redgate itself. Um, but even our, our website, the redgate.com website, attracts 4 million uh, visitors each year. So I think uh, from all of these stats that we see on the screen at the moment, the one that really leaps out at me is this uh, 1,058 product releases last year. So of course, many people look to DevOps because of the ability to improve the way that we deliver uh, software releases. And this is really an area that we know lots about. We know about putting out lots of releases year on year, um, and that number kind of demonstrates that. So um, before we start talking about database DevOps, let's um, let's first attempt to define DevOps itself. I've been to 101 different presentations on DevOps, and I've heard probably 101 different definitions. But personally, I lean towards uh, Donovan Brown's definition. So Donovan Brown is the principal. DevOps program manager at Microsoft. And he says DevOps is the union of people, process, and products to enable continuous delivery of value to our end users. Now, the one thing that I really, really like about this straight away is that last sentence where it says value to our end users. It's very easy to get caught up in the improvement and you know refine your process, but ultimately we must remember that the reason why we're doing this is so that we can deliver more value to our end users, so that we can actually produce something of desire for those people who are consuming our releases. So please, 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 whatever you do, don't lose track of that. But actually, a slightly deeper analysis of this statement shows that there's three key areas that Donovan identifies, people, process, and products. Redgate's a tools company, so of course our, our focus is largely on the, the products and how they tie into the process. But you need all three of these things to come together to actually uh, succeed when a trying to embrace DevOps practices. Unfortunately, it's not something you can just buy or you can't just decide tomorrow, okay, we're gonna start doing DevOps. It's a shift that needs the right guidance to become reality. So, I mean, there are significant challenges and costs to adopting DevOps in the financial industry, but the benefits are just too great to ignore as are the risks of not delivering value to customers quickly enough and potentially using you, losing your customers to competitors or new fintech disruptors. So 
why are these DevOps practices so appealing? Well, organizations look to DevOps because of the growing evidence that DevOps practices help you to deliver your software faster, more reliably, and with fewer errors. The 2017 State of DevOps report by DevOps Research and Assessment, along with uh, Puppet, measures IT performance based upon two main dimensions. Uh, the first dimension is throughput. And by this, we mean how frequently can a team uh, deploy code, as well as how fast can it move from committing code to source control to actually pushing that out uh, to an environment. And the second dimension is stability. How quickly the system can recover from downtime and how many changes succeed versus how many fail. Now, this year's report showed that higher performers or those that have adopted DevOps practices do significantly better than lower performing peers in terms of throughput and stability. But actually, when we compare this with last year's report, we can see that the gap between high and low performers has narrowed slightly for throughput, uh, which remember is what we said is based upon deployment frequency and lead time, but it's actually widened for stability which is the thing that we measured by looking at mean time to recover and change failure rate. And to me, I guess this is likely because those lower performing teams have worked to increase speed, but haven't really invested enough in building quality into the process. Higher performers, on the other hand, understand that they don't have to trade speed for stability or vice versa, because actually by building quality, they get both. So these goals, how, how do these relate specifically to financial services. Well, as mentioned on the last slide, organizations are turning to DevOps practices like continuous delivery to ensure faster software releases, reduce downtime and improve compliance. And whilst there are many, many other drivers uh, such as minimizing operational costs or greater innovation, um, I want to focus on just these three for a moment and see how they relate to financial services. So firstly, the, the financial services industry is, is under increasing pressure to release software faster, whether that's from new entrants to the market, such as mobile only banks, or perhaps the likes of Google and Apple entering the mobile payment space, or maybe even increased investment in fintech startups. Traditional financial institutions, whether small trading firms or global banks, need to increase the speed of delivery if they're going to su survive. And adopting DevOps practices has been proven to significantly increase the speed of delivery with, as we said, high IT performers deploying multiple times per day compared to low IT performers who are deploying between once a week and uh, maybe even as infrequently as once a month. Now, the second point here, reduced downtime. The cost of an unplanned outage in the financial services industry is more than 2.5 times higher compared to other industries. And that's according to research from Gartner. Some sources actually say that it's on average $110,000 per hour, which is you know, a huge astronomical figure. So in the ever competitive industry, today's financial institutions can't afford these costly mistakes. And of course, adopting DevOps practices has been proven to significantly reduce the downtime. Once again, high IT performers, uh, as we saw on that last slide, are having 96 times faster mean time to recovery than those lower performing peers. Now, the final point here we made was to improve compliance. Now, the financial services industry is one of the most highly regulated sectors in the world. It's probably the highest regulated place where I, I work with organizations. And applying DevOps practices allows for greater risk management because of those small, uh, small iterative changes that are being thoroughly tested by a CI process. And this leads to far greater levels of confidence than perhaps we might have in the tr traditional software development cycle. Again, the 2017 State of DevOps report found that higher performers spend 50% less time remediating security issues than their low performing peers. So everything's pointing in the right direction for us. Everything's suggesting that this is a direction that we should travel in. So let's take a look uh, in a bit more detail at one of the parts of DevOps. So I, I already mentioned that you know DevOps is a, a, a broad concept that involves lots and lots of things. It's uh, about changing culture and improving collaboration between development and operations, but it's also about automating many of the common jobs in delivering software. So testing, compliance and security checks, software packaging and configuration management, as well as deployment. 
And here on the screen at the moment, we can see a, a typical automated deployment pipeline. It starts on the left-hand side with our developers making changes to code, uh, which gets committed to source control. This code, uh, once committed to source control, triggers off a continuous integration process, which is going to include um, automated testing steps to validate the code that's been added to the repository. And ultimately, if it passes all of those steps, it's going to produce some kind of artifacts that are passed over to our release management tool to enable us to deploy those updates out to our target environments, testing, QA, staging, and ultimately through to production. And this is relatively common these days in the application space. So many of the organizations that I've worked with already have taken uh, some steps towards this or have perhaps even uh, got this up and running completely for the application. But actually, one of the problems is that many, many are jeopardizing their DevOps success by failing to include the database. Databases are more problematic. Uh, business critical data needs to be safely and correctly preserved. Um, databases carry state that needs to be managed as part of rolling out new or updating the existing software. And of course, in the financial services industry, there are specific challenges such as you know, the incredibly complex systems that we see, legacy databases, and uh, you know, those siloed departments that we talk, talked about earlier with the uh, importance of collaboration. But Redgate have worked with a number of organizations to extend DevOps practices to the database, uh, enabling us to create reliable, scalable, and repeatable processes for building, testing, and deploying database changes alongside your application code. To us, we believe that the database should just fall in place alongside the application, as we can see in this updated diagram here. Of course, the people need to be part of this. So we see the DBA added in so that we can benefit from their expertise and use their skills. But the developers, whether they be application developers or database developers, they still work on changes which should be committed to source control. Those commits to source control should still trigger continuous integration builds, which include automated testing only not just for the application, but also for the database code. And that automated process should produce some kind of artifact that we can use as part of an automated uh, deployment process to push those database changes out to our various target environments. Again, ultimately up to production. But I, I already mentioned that you know, databases are seen as more problematic. So what, why is that? Why do we consider databases to be difficult to handle? Well, I think it's largely because of the persistent data that our businesses are built on. Um, when we look at uh, databases, there's a, an odd relationship between schema changes and existing data. We, we want to be able to update a database, but we can't simply uh, drop the existing database and replace it with the new version that we want because we'll lose all of our data. So instead, we have to create some sort of upgrade script that almost negotiates with the target environment uh, to request that it bring itself up to date uh, based upon the desired state that you would like it to be in. And through creating these upgrade scripts, of course, we're creating code, which needs to be reviewed. Twice as much code normally means twice as many errors. And if the, the state that we want and the way that we get there through these upgrade scripts don't match, which one is right? What is our source of truth? Um, without a clear idea of our source of truth, how is DevOps even possible? So we need to take into account the, uh, the nature of databases and, and how they differ from application code, which of course we can just throw away and start again. Um, we can just put a new version of our application out there. As well as this, we have reference data versus production data or static data. We sometimes refer to reference data as here at Redgate. Um, so whilst the database has existing data, not all of it is production data in, in the sense that it's been generated through the day-to-day -day use of our database as it was intended. What about things like country codes? Um, Reference data or static data lookup data is the data that makes our systems work. And this data needs to get deployed along with our schema changes. But remember, we need to preserve that data that's already there that comes from that day-to-day -day use. So we also need to think about um, how we deploy the intended updates from the data that's in development through testing up to production. And of course, we might want to do the reverse as well. How do we bring data down from production back uh, down the chain for testing 
Um, how do we build dev environments with production-like data? Um, so there's this, this movement of data that we need to be considerate of as well. Um, now, you know, traditionally these challenges have been the problems of, of DBAs and um, one of the great benefits of a DevOps approach is that actually bringing the DBAs into the mix or bringing operations and development together, we're able to tackle these problems through process changes rather than have, having it remain the uh, task of a particular individual within the team. But actually, if we look at this on the database side of things, then perhaps it's more evident than anywhere else where there is a difference between uh, development and operations. I mean, who's who's never heard of problems existing between development teams and DBA teams? Um, many, many of the organizations that I work with have uh, very much a love-hate relationship between those two groups. Um, but actually, we want to, to bring these two together so that they can uh, both feed into a process that's going to work for them uh, on both sides and is also going to work for the organization to allow them to achieve their, their goals. Um, it goes further than that as well. Application source code, we often use source control as we saw on the diagram earlier. We invented distributed source control systems and uh, you know we can talk about the optimal branching strategies for implementing um, separation of development and also the optimal strategies for continuous integration. But we've barely begun to have these conversations for databases. We, we don't even have strategies for how to provision individual developers with their own sandboxes often. And sometimes different developers work in different ways, some working off scripts, others working directly on the database. So we need a better way of working together. We need a, a way of bringing everybody together in a, in, in a single way. And of course, we haven't yet considered testing um, to to any great extent. Um, with our databases under source control, uh, acquiring suitable test data and uh, provisioning test environments when we when we push uh, our changes up the chain is something that traditionally, again, has been left to DBAs. But but we need a process to deal with that. And all of these challenges, all of these challenges can lead to um, the final point here. Uh, databases can drift. Um, in DevOps and continuous delivery, we often talk about cycle time. How long would it take you to make a one line change, run it through your normal testing process and get it to production? And if that cycle time for your database is measured in days or weeks or, or months or maybe even years, I haven't worked with anybody where it's that bad yet, then when you hit a production issue, you don't have time to go back to your source code. The business is hemorrhaging money and the DBA will make a decision. What is more expensive, the cost of delaying a fix or the risk of making that low risk change now and fixing the problem right away? It's all well and good wagging your finger at people who choose to make hot fixes directly on production, but until you sort out the problem of having a, a huge cycle time, it won't go away. Production drift is, is actually just a symptom of poor DevOps or, or database lifecycle management strategy. And drift causes more problems. Environment inconsistencies undermine your tests and can cause failed deployments either because code clashes or because important fixes are accidentally rolled back. Um, drift and poor DevOps processes are a, a, a vicious circle. And uh, you know it's my goal to make sure that, that we break that vicious circle. So understanding these challenges, of course, we, we have to think of the benefits. Uh, once we understand why it's going to be difficult, we really need to look to what we're going to gain from it to, to ensure that we get the backing and the support that we need to go through that change, go through that process that's going to end that, allow us to end in that better, uh, better state. So most of you are probably familiar with the principles of application lifecycle management and database lifecycle management here is no different. Our focus is to help build repeatability into your delivery process where you're continuously testing the production readiness of changes that you apply to your databases. Deploying small units of change is really, really the key principle here. I've spoken with loads and loads of DBAs who are required to, to review code of thousands of lines of scripts when it comes to deploying uh, database changes. And that can take days, uh, you know, depending on how many errors they find in that script, it, it could take weeks. But by committing database changes to source control on a regular basis, you can introduce automated builds and automated tests to make sure all of those small units of change are tested and validated multiple times before you're ready to deploy to your next environment. 
And that can result in your releases being more reliable and less time consuming. So having understood all of this, um, Redgate wanted to get a feel for what the current state of database DevOps was um, out there. And so we, uh, we conducted a survey and we recently published a report with a, a very database centric view of DevOps. And this report is based upon the answers of over a thousand respondents. But what I want to do and share with you guys today is some of the results specifically from the financial services industry. And uh, as part of this, we'll also look at where there are any significant differences to um, you know, the wider industry's results set. Um, but remember, this is focusing specifically on database DevOps. So first of all, let's look at adoption um, in IT projects. And one of the first things that leapt out when looking at the results here from specifically from within the financial services industry is that there's a much stronger lean towards DevOps approaches than the, the wider uh, market as a whole. So the, the wider uh, database users market as a whole. So compared to the results across all industries, we see that slightly more have already adopted DevOps practices um, and also less have no plans to start adopting DevOps practices. So this is this is a thing that's happening, it's coming whether anybody likes it or not. It's something that, that we need to embrace. Um, as part of this kind of section, this, this section of questions, we also asked whether their teams in, included any developers that work across both databases and applications. Um, now, in the financial services industry, actually fewer respondents have developers in their team who work across both sides. Um, and actually, similarly, fewer respondents working in the financial services industry described how closely developers and DBA are integrated as, as great. Um, it was much more common to have responses of OK or poor um, compared with the uh, wider industry stats. So this, this tells us something already. It, it tells us that we, we don't have the closeness that perhaps has naturally evolved in other industries. So we, uh, as, as a whole, 75% of organizations said that they had developers working across uh, both the application and the database. And that's, that's just not true in the financial services industry. So there's an area that we need to work on. There's an area that, um, you know, we need to put some effort into bringing people closer together so that we have more united teams collaborating together to deliver um, database change. Another area I think that's of interest is the obstacles that people drew out to implementing a, a DevOps approach. Um, so, you know, the, the biggest one here that leaps out, 23% uh, lack of appropriate skills in the team. This is this is no surprise to me again, because actually we've probably got skills within the organization. They're just not working together within the team. Um, they're separated out. They're siloed areas. Um, so, again, this collaboration of bringing people together and also providing tooling to facilitate um, the working together of these uh, two uh, groups on a, with a single common goal. That's really an area that we can make great gains very, very, very quickly. Um, in general, though, uh, the, when talking specifically about financial services, these results were pretty typical um, to those across all industries. Um, also, looking at the practices that are already in place for database development, the re results were fairly similar between financial service industry and, and wider sectors. Um, however, one thing that was of note was that actually uh, version control and server performance monitoring were slightly higher. So we've, we've got a bit of a head start in financial services. More of us are already uh, source controlling our database code and also have something on the end to check when things are going wrong. So that uh, that performance monitoring piece. Um, and that's that's great news. It means that you know we, we do have an advantage in some sense. Um, we talk about at the, right at the beginning. We talked about our ability to deliver change, and so it's interesting to see uh, within the industry how quickly people are deploying database changes. And I think this is a really useful reference point for everybody out there to look at how often they're delivering database change and and see where you fit on on this uh, uh, diagram here. So 31% uh, of respondents were, were deploying a couple of times a month. Um, and that's, you know, that's 
that's okay, that's fine. Um, but actually, it's not a great deal less that we see we're deploying more than once a week or even daily. So it's definitely moving towards that increased frequency. And with that increased frequency, we, as we said before, gain that ability to, to deliver value more quickly. So whether that be moving ahead of our competitors or keeping up with the uh, advances that our competitors have made, we need to be able to deliver that quickly to our customer base, to our users, so that we can stay in touch, so that we can survive. Now, uh, one thing of note, it's, uh, I haven't got it on the slide here, but um, actually when looking at the data, uh, despite having the same daily and bi-monthly frequency of deployments or the, the same results, the finance sector actually has fewer weekly deployments, but more monthly deployments. Um, and that's something interesting to me. I, I think perhaps it's an area for further study uh, so that we can see if there's a reason behind this uh, difference. Um, but it was, you know, on, on the whole, these are relatively in line with um, the wider stats that we gained from the report. So let's move on to uh, drivers for automating the delivery of database changes. And you know, there's absolutely no surprises here. The clear winner is, of course, increasing the speed of database change. And we saw right at the very beginning when we were looking at those statistics that even low performing organizations tried to increase the speed of change, uh, but they did it at the expense of quality. So everybody's trying, trying, trying to, to push those changes through faster. Uh, what I guess I found slightly surprising was actually the relatively low number of responses relating to reducing uh, the risk of losing data, uh, so 10% that we can see here. Um, and the reason that surprises me is, re remember, embracing DevOps practices should not only enable faster delivery of changes, but it should also increase the reliability of those changes. So my expectation um, uh, would be that people you know want both of these things together um, and that's that's one area that i found slightly interesting um, in both the financial services industry and the wider sector responses synchronizing application and database changes was, was seen as one of the greatest challenges um, overcoming different approaches to application and database development um, and of course preserving and protecting business critical data were also ranked pretty highly um, but when asked how long it would take for organizations to move from traditional database development practices to a fully automated process for deploying database changes uh, the results were were quite interesting as well. In, in financial services, 13% of people thought that it would take them less than six months. And that compares with 20% of people uh, who, who thought less less than six months in uh, wider sectors. Um, also, the other th one of note is that in financial services, 21% of people thought it would take more than two years um, compared to uh, the wider sector results of 19% saying that they thought it would take more than two years. So, I think it's fair to say that within financial services, we, we believe this may be more of a, a challenge. Um, but, you know, I've already identified on, on a previous slide there that we do have a head start in certain areas. So based upon all of this information that we gathered from the organizations that we work with, from the respondents to that survey, um, and really from Redgate's unique position as, as being one of the only vendors able to provide database DevOps tooling with the pedigree and history that we have in the database space, we, um, we wanted to uh, produce something that we could share with uh, the organizations that we work with so that they can get a measure for themselves. We, we know that database DevOps is important. We know that the current state within the industry is that people are moving towards it and we know that um, people are seeing that there are challenges but actually those challenges are not insurmountable. So we can see why a move to DevOps is desirable but we've also been able to highlight some of the areas where there are specific differences for those in the financial services industry um, and, and pull out some of those bits. But whether you're exploring the advantages of DevOps or you're already fully immersed in the journey, including the database really does bring additional advantages. So now we can help you assess the maturity of your own process and use that insight to benchmark you against your competition and make recommendations for how you can move forward. So in terms of database DevOps uh, maturity, Redgate have split this out into three key areas, uh, environments and de uh, development, 
continuous integration and deployment, and finally protecting and preserving data. Um, and I want to talk through each one of those in, in just a little bit more depth. So we would consider organizations to be at an advanced level from, from the information that we've had back um, uh, from those, as I say, the survey respondents. We'd consider you to be at an advanced level for environments and deployment if you have that good, strong level of collaboration between uh, teams. And you know, you're using best practices that are commonplace in application lifecycle management, such as version control, automated provisioning, um, all those types of things that we want to uh, want to see in place for the database as well as the application and this means that you, you know your, your team is freed up so uh, what what we saw actually is that 33 percent of respondents said their database is not even being version controlled yet so on the whole the uh, financial services industry whilst it, it's ahead of the wider uh, results, there's still not a huge chunk of people that are taking even the most basic step of version control in their database. So how does uh, how does this compare for you guys? I mean, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be very interested to hear. Once you're at the advanced stage here, though, you can spend more time improving the quality of your code in development um, to save time later on. And, and, and you can even get earlier feedback on the potential errors and minimize the potential performance problems that you will get when um, these changes are ultimately deployed out to production. So that's environment and environments and development. The second uh, area of DevOps that uh, we've broken this down into, as I say, is continuous integration and deployment. Um, and here, what we would consider an advanced level uh, for this area are teams that are really automating the database deployment pipeline uh, with automated tests alongside it. We want to have uh, realistic test data in there. So essentially what we're doing is we're minimizing the risk of bad code reaching any further up the chain. And all this happens in the background without um, teams of people having to interact with it. You know, a change is committed to source control that triggers off this uh, process, um, which lets us know very, very quickly whether or not we've got a good version of our code or a bad version of our code. So again, you know, how, how do you compare? Um, across all industries, 13% are deploying database changes daily. 24% um, of people make production releases more than once a week. Um, those are, are figures straight from the state of uh, database DevOps report. But actually, when we compare that to financial services, 17% um, of organizations are deploying database changes uh, weekly. So uh, up a little bit higher there. And uh, a further 20% make production releases more than once a week. So where do you fit uh, on, this, on this scale? How, uh, how advanced do you think you are? Once you are at the advanced stage, of course, you can learn how a test-driven development process can make it possible to deploy many changes a day to SQL Server databases. And that can lead you all the way towards continuous database deployment with, with that level of confidence. As I said, you shouldn't risk stability with increased speed. The final area, really protecting and preserving data. Um, and you know, here what we're looking for is a, a, a solid data management strategy um, with that server performance uh, monitoring uh, in place so that you can correlate um, any changes that have been made and, and really drill down to the cause of the issues very, very quickly, which allow you, of course, to go back and correct those issues, push that through the automated process very quickly and have that new version in production uh, to, to solve the issue. Um, so here again, you know, 56% of organizations have server performance monitoring in place, which is, is brilliant um, for uh, the financial services industry. Um, compares with a slightly fewer on the, the wider space. Um, but actually, if we look at this in particular, uh, the, the overall figure for those who have already adopted DevOps, uh, that figure increases to 64%. So you know, DevOps helps us uh, achieve this. Um, it's, it's kind of, you know, a, a causal relationship in both directions. Um, but once you're at this advanced stage, you can you can spend your time making sure your organization is GDPR ready. That's coming very soon. That's not going to go away. Um, and there are there are tons of resources to help you learn more about the additional measures you may need to put in place to comply with those uh, data protection uh, 
regulations coming into effect in May next year, um, including personal data and privacy and the GDPR on Redgate Simple Talk blog. Uh, so, you know, if you haven't taken a look at Simple Talk before, I really recommend heading over there. It's a, a really valuable resource uh, with loads of very, very interesting articles. So I've asked it many times, you know, how do your database DevOps processes um, compare to your peers? Um, we've looked and talked a little bit about where you might fit, uh, where, where advanced is are on uh, these scales when we've broken it down into those three different areas. Um, but you as an organization might fit at different places on this scale, depending on which of those areas we're talking about. Um, and, you know, we we want to help you work out where that is. So actually, after the webinar today, um, we'll follow up with more information about how you can conduct your own uh, database DevOps maturity assessment um, and get results specific to your organization. So, guys, I, I think that's that's taken us through a bit of our journey, really. We've um, we've looked at the drivers for adopting DevOps uh, as a whole, and then specifically within uh, financial institutions. Um, we've spoken about some of the key challenges that we have when implementing uh, DevOps and why specifically the database can uh, give us uh, additional problems. And we've used uh, some of the statistics from that report to give us some insight into the, the current state of database DevOps uh, within the financial services industry. Um, and finally, here we've looked at a, a framework, a, a maturity framework that will allow you to, to benchmark and uh, improve your database DevOps practices um, and, and, and look at how that compares against some of your competitors and, and peers. So with that, I'd like to thank you all very much for, for giving me the time to talk you through some of these points and challenges today. And um, I'll happily open up for, uh, for any questions that you might have. Um, if you do have questions, please feel free to type them into the chat window. Um, we will, due to the number of attendees today, we'll, we'll likely keep the microphone silenced. Otherwise, it will be uh, far too noisy to actually hear any of the questions. Um, but I'll, I'll just give you a couple of moments just to type in those questions now. Okay, so we uh, we have a few questions coming through now. Um, first one here: what 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 do I think the biggest risk in implementing uh, database DevOps is? Um, I guess I think for me it's it's setting yourself up for failure by by not getting the the right people on board initially. Um, you need to get sponsorship at the the right level, um, and often uh, people can try and do. Uh, too much all at once. Um, it's it's a transition, like we said. It's something that you need to move towards uh, s slowly by identifying areas of weakness, improving them, and then moving on. Um, so just like DevOps, it, it, you know, it really um, promotes this incremental, small change uh, process. Actually, that's the best way to to employ DevOps as well. Um, little by little, increasing up. Um, start with source control. Get your database under source control if you haven't done it already. Once it's under source control, let's start automating those builds. Um, and of course, the collaboration of those people as well. That's um, that's that's really important. Um, but but Redgate can help with this. I mean, we have a fantastic tool set in the SQL Toolbelt that contains components that really. Um, uh, help make it a lot easier to adopt some of these practices um, with the right it's, it's not all about tooling I, I keep saying this uh, but with the right tooling it can make the rest of the puzzle a lot easier to fit into place um, so I guess it's somewhat related to the the people side of things that we mentioned there um, what can we do to prevent people fighting against uh, the change um, We've spoken about this within our organization and it sounds like many people think this might. Okay, um, so so I guess the question here is about 
people resisting this because it, they think it's a negative thing um, against them as individual. And, and it's really easy for any kind of automation to be seen as taking something away uh, from the value of people within a team. Um, however, what's what's true is that by allowing uh, people the freedom to spend more time on delivering value, they're actually increasing their value to the organisation. Um, if you if you're spending your time, uh, you know, re uh, fi fixing the same thing over and over again because it, it wasn't right when it made its way through, um, then actually you're just duplicating work. Um, if you improve the process to allow you to spot that earlier, so that it doesn't um, reach the point where you have to reinvest your time into doing that work all over again, then actually you can spend your time delivering more value, um, which can be pushed out to end users more quickly. Um, and, and therefore, you know, you're embracing Donovan's comments around uh, delivering value to our end users. Um, okay, so a couple of other questions we've got coming up. I'll just have a read through some of these. Okay, so we have, you never covered segregation of duty in banking. Um, our biggest concern is dev not deploying code directly into production. If there is no segregation of duty, then how to manage the flow to know that control changes are going through. Um, so, uh, yeah, so so actually this is, this is a really interesting question. And I, I think if I've understood it correctly, it, it relates to something that I hear quite a lot. Um, uh, Redgate's customer base is, is very focused in, in, in some regions around um, financial services, healthcare, um, you know, and and there is a lot of concern over um, who can do what where in, the, in those spaces. Um, and many people, when I talk about DevOps and, and automation, many people think that I am insisting that we have to have continuous uh, deployment or, or con um, uh, continuous delivery. Actually, that's not what I mean. What, what I mean is, you know, let's take some steps towards that until we're comfortable and then um, do a little bit more until we're comfortable and then stop and then do a little bit more. So, you know, when we're talking about having uh, separation, you, you don't want developers deploying code directly into production. So that's fine. Don't have an automated deployment pipeline that pushes the code that your developers commit to source control straight into your production environment. No, instead, let's have an automated process that makes it possible for that code to be pushed directly up to production, but actually stop short of that. So maybe in our staging environment, we have that deployment take place. And at that point, we have a manual intervention step where our DBAs would come in and review the changes that are about to be made to make sure they match up to the, the models that we've uh, subscribed ourselves to. And then they manually do that final push out to production. Um, it's not an all or nothing thing. Um, you know, let's let's just take steps in the right direction. And over time, I think we'll become more and more comfortable with uh, um, the process. But of course, there's going to become points where where you want manual intervention, you want that separation. And that's certainly possible with all of the Redgate components of the processes that we advocate. Um, remember, Redgate tools work alongside um, existing uh, tools out there. So things like um, Octopus Deploy, Bamboo, Jenkins, uh, Visual Studio Team Services, all of those things. Uh, we just plug into that. And, and most of these tools have encountered these types of industries before. So they have in the mechanisms that allow us to um, include those manual intervention steps. Uh, so can the DevOps methodology be applied to a business intelligence environment? Uh, another question we just had through. Um, I, I, again, I think so. Um, I have worked with other organizations who have embraced DevOps practices. Um, you just have to find the point at which you're comfortable with uh, uh, what, what you're doing. Get that in place, stop, and then push a little bit harder uh, and a little bit further next time, and gradually increase the practices that um, that, that, that you're moving towards. Um, sometimes with business intelligence, we have to be careful about how much um, change is going on within the uh, target warehouses and things. But but that's certainly something that Redgate can work with you on to um, to make sure that we get the right fit and the right combination um, for for your particular use case. Um, well, well, another question that's come through, do, do I really believe that organizations are ready for continuous deployment? Um, 
I, I, I think I, I kind of touched upon that when uh, when answering the the previous question around um, you know automate and deployment to production just by developers committing changes to source control. Um, no, I, I don't think everybody's ready for continuous deployment. I don't think uh, most of the big financial institutions that I work with uh, even want that. I mean, that, that sounds like a, a terrifying thing for them to have right now. But actually, every step that we take towards that is a step in the right direction. And so if we can just automate uh, deployment to a testing environment and then have a manual process from there on, then that's great. That's taken some of that uh, 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 well, freed up some of that time for us to work on delivering more value at the earlier part of the process. Later on, we can maybe look at how we can automate delivering those changes to a staging environment. Um, and then that's freed up more time and, and more of our, our human resource to focus on other areas. Um, so, no, I, I don't think it's something that tomorrow morning everybody's going to wake up and suddenly decide that they want their developers to commit changes to source control and that to end up in production. Uh, certainly not. Um, I think it's a, a progression that we work towards as, a, as an ideal. Um, and maybe, just maybe, one day, um, then that will be seen as, as something that, um, that is desirable. But this takes time. This is not, it's not an overnight change. Uh, I think companies need help with the business process in addition to Redgate tools. Uh, better adoption if you can help with the business processes also. Um, so, so I think this is, you know, this comes back to people, products, and process. Um, Redgate is a is a tools company. Um, we have many times considered, uh, you know, this, I guess, the professional services side of this. How do we help uh, organisations facilitate this change? Um, and whilst there's certain things that we can do directly uh, working with our, our customers, um, we also have a, a growing partner network where um, we have some some really, really very highly skilled partners that uh, specialize in in the people side of things. Um, one of the partners that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, there's also a partner that we work of who, uh, which is actually a, a member of my team, um, uh, started up his, his, his own consultancy. And so, you know, he, he knows the Redgate tools inside out, but then also with all of the organizations that he's worked with, he knows how to handle the people side of things, the process side of things. So um, so there's a lot that we can do directly with your organization. Um, but if you know you need some additional help, if you need consultancy, then, then we can put you in touch with the right people. Um, and we're very happy to, to kind of, again, work as the facilitators to make sure that we, um, uh, we do as much as we can to help you uh, achieve your objectives. And and if it's not something that we can help with directly, we'll make sure that we put you in touch with the right people to achieve that as well. Okay, um, I, so I, I think we're coming towards the uh, the end of the questions now. I'll just leave a, a couple more moments. Okay. Excellent. Um, so once again, thank you, everybody, uh, for uh, taking the time to listen to my presentation today. I, I really hope that it was informative and useful um, for you. Um, by all means, do head on over to the uh, Redgate website, uh, redgate.com forward slash solutions, uh, where you can discover more details on the full Redgate uh, database DevOps offering. Um, or indeed contact us at devops at redgate.com. Um, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. If you'd like to talk about the subject more, I'd be, be really happy to. But thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.